Hey, I'm Aeon. And I'm the Lioness. And you're listening to Box Number 512 Podcast. Grown Black Trans Woman Talk. Changing your world one conversation at a time. The show begins now. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 18 of Box Number 512 Podcast. Yes, Grown Black Trans Woman Live. I am the Lioness. And I'm Aeon. So I guess we'll start with updates first. Mm-hmm. So nothing, not much has happened since our live video that we did on, what was that, Saturday? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing much has happened. I've just been here in the house. I got to go to brunch with one of my good girlfriends um, from law school, Miss Emma. Oh, shout out to Miss Emma. I um, got to go to brunch, but it's no shade. I'm ready to get the fuck out of Chicago again. Like, other than that little outing, I've been extremely bored since I got back here. And I'm ready to dash again because I'm just... And my boxes haven't gotten here yet, so I have no reason to pack yet. They're still uh, in progress, which I don't don't know about that because I purposely ordered everything I needed while I was away in Atlanta, so would be here by now. But I'm I'm ready to hit it. Chicago, this is not summertime shine. It's very um, boring. Though most things are open, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not the same. What about Dang. you? So for me, it's more of like I'm just at home. I'm relaxing, like so. Just kind of trying to figure out what I. I guess I'm I'm coming up on my birthday, so just trying to think about like what is that looking like? What do I want to do? Also thinking about like family. I haven't seen people in a while, so then how do I begin coordinating? Trying to see about my folks. Um, and then just kind of trying to hold it in the road. I've been doing a lot of speaking and things as of lately. Um, shout out to, so here in Atlanta locally, yesterday I had the privilege of attending an, an, of an event for, um, Hope for Change. Um, and it was a division of a vision for tomorrow. But anyway, this organization started the first trans housing program that actually has a house, a multi-unit house housing the girls. And this and, and the entire community came out. It was almost like a gala event, girl. I was low-key shook. I couldn't even eat the food because I had to keep the mask over my, my mouth the whole time. But everybody who was anybody came out there. The entire pageantry community came out there. Shout out to the to the adult industry that came out to support. I mean, all the girls from all walks. What do you mean adult industry? Meaning like girls that, that operate in the adult industry, like were coming to the event, like people that are icons in that world. I don't want to, I'm not necessarily trying to put that out there like that. Cause I don't want it to overshadow. <laughs> <people>. <laughs> Go ahead. No, it's I, not even shade. Like these no, are people no, no, that no. are. I, no, I know what you meant. I was just trying to get more details. Oh, 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 yeah, girl. No, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm talking about legends in the biz, like people that are are they they business women about their shit. Um, so everybody who was anybody came out, and I was just impressed. I was just impressed. Um, so. As impressed as I was for the event for the housing program, they hired trans folk. It was led by a cis guy. And that was just really exciting to see. And to see how he was able to get parts of our community that are usually divided to come together. Mm -hmm. But then it was just that bit of me that was like, damn, I wish we could do things like these for ourselves. Because while we were there that day, Funders and people were he ninety five thousand dollars was raised for the trans housing program here in Atlanta, or at least the program that he started. And it's like this is such a large outpouring of money for an issue that's been happening for a very long time. And shout out to this black cis man for using his privilege or whatever, even this cis gay man for using his privilege 
to, 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 to start something for the girls. And that's wonderful. But I just acknowledge that it took him having to, having to really commit to it. And I feel like that's indicative of just patriarchy in general. Now, this is not to take away from him again. This is a blessing. And I would love to, I can't wait to see what Dwayne Crowder does in the world. I can't wait to see what his mark will be because if it aligns how he's saying it will align, the world will be changed by his, some of his efforts. So that event yesterday was fabulous, darling. All the girls were dressed out to the nines. Shout out to my sister Toya for not telling me what to wear. <laughs> okay. And telling me, oh, girl, it's just a little backyard. Tuxedos <laughs> <laughs> were in the building. This thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Don't you hate when the girls don't give you all the details? That's like my thing. Because she had on this extremely formal looking ass um, blue, like chiffon dress, right? And I'm like, okay, girl, that's cute. I'm like, okay, she just really wanted to just, I guess because, you know, I was like, maybe because it's like a, you know, it's a, like, a, like a patch of people going to be there. Right. No, girl, I get there and they are done. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I'm looking like very nice after church seeds. You know, right. like I got on like a dress with sneakers, bitch. Like I'm not giving the the people had matching masks to match their dresses, girl. It was very like Atlanta carries anyway. But I was shout out just jokingly though. No. I mean it was tea. I had fun and I looked fine, but shout out to my sister Toya for not giving me all the facts, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. Well, that sounds like a good time. Shit, I would have wanted to go if I was still in Atlanta, honey, so I could mingle and eat some food and have a um, a coordinated mask on, honey. Shout out to um my friend New York, Derard Rowe. He sent me a custom mask that he sold for me. I gotta um take a picture of it with it on, but it's like bees and it's fuchsia and it's three layers of fabric and it's very. I could have I could have debuted her there, honey. But, and um, the name of the org is A Vision for Hope. And that's the name of the A Vision for Hope just has a house for their transgender housing program. So shout out to A Vision for Hope. Yes. Well, now that we have done our updates, um, we're going to get into one of the main topics. And I definitely want to... Um, preface it's it's necessary that i um preface this topic um the first thing that i want to say is for people that are uh listening to this particular episode that are not trans uh consider yourselves privileged because what you are about to listen um is the lioness and myself mainly talk through an issue and try to work through it intra-communal issue, like on a public platform, just to be a demonstration of how um, we should, especially as trans, Black trans women with platforms, we should be calling each other in and really having hard and uncomfortable conversations with the purpose of thoroughly explaining our position and also leaving the the room open for there to be like further conversation and growth. And oh, so, word for, I'm about to read the dog shit out of Samaya. No, I'm playing. No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, no, no, no. We talked about this in advance. I was just, that was just an attempt at me lightening the mood. Uh, <laughs> y'all, no, no, no. We, we, we are just going to have a little, a little cute conversation real fast. Y'all buckle your seat. Right. And th- and this is grown black trans women talk. So, you know, we we f- the first thing is that we're all adults. We're all grown and we're all adults. And we should be able to, you know, talk to each other as sisters about, you know, about the hard things as well. So and that's she's not reading me, y'all. I was just joking about that. No, 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 no. Also, <laughs> number two, that I have no reason to throw shade to be shady to any other girl 
um, that's out here that is a representation for our community that is um, out here doing the work and being visible for our community. So if I ever say anything, it's definitely a critique, but I have no reason to uh, be shady because at the end of the day, whether we uh, agree or disagree, if we are both, we're all out here black and trans and for this particular person, a woman, a black trans woman, our fates are kind of intertwined. So you winning is indicative of me winning, right? You being a voice and being a presence is a voice of all of us being a voice and a presence. So with that in mind, I have, I have no reason or no energy to be shady to you or to shoot any shade to you because I don't need to do that. That's not why I wanted to help create this platform. That's not why I wanted to be a part of this platform to try to use it and any other like ancillary things like our social media pages to tear particular black trans women down. That's definitely um, not my goal and not my intention. And I know that's not the lioness's intention, but we have to be critical uh, when people are representing our community, even if it's one of us, even if it's one of us, we have to be critical when information is being put out there to the masses and the information, I don't want to say it's wrong or correct because that's relative to the person. But I think the one thing that we can agree on is some things are just harmful to our community. Okay, so... I feel like I've set the tone. Lioness, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I think, um, thank you for, um, thank you for that, sis. And, you know, just know, like, you guys, it ain't nothing but living. Living is about correction and growth and and, and understanding that you can be critiqued in love and with love. And so, uh, go ahead, girl. Yeah. So, now we're going to get to the, the crux of the issue. And, we're going to be talking about Hope Giselle and Hope gave the both of the, us permission to be able to speak, to use her name or to speak directly to her. So I wanted to, you know, take the time now to, you know, speak directly to her. We're not talking around it. You know, we're calling things. Exactly. Now, before we, can we give a little background on? No, no, no. I was about, no, I was about to do that. Oh, okay. So about like two, I think about two Fridays ago, the grapevine did a, a, an episode which was about uh, violence against p- Black trans women, and they had a panel of Black trans women. And w- I believe we talked about it on our f- live, the last live we did bef- that preceded this, the one on Saturday, and we talked about it a little bit on our last episode. Hope Giselle, who is a um, Black um, trans activist and advocate who has a very large social media platform, was one of the panelists on the platform. Um, so to the, and I believe we pra- we praised the episode. We, we thought that the, it was good to see the black trans woman and it was a good representation, um, though we didn't agree with everybody's perspective. Um, and I think that the, at the end of that day, that's when we did our live and we, ca- we talked about the good and the bad about the panel, but there was a particular moment towards the end of the episode um, where the it was near the end and the trans women were t- um, talking specifically to um, black cis people about the things that they could do to be better allies to black trans women. So at the end of the panel, um, Hope pauses and she makes the statement, black cis people don't owe anybody anything. And she then goes on and she said it really like, like like it was a very emphatic. So, and then she goes on to perceive that, you know, we have to be empathetic to trans women, to cis black women in their plight and nobody cares about them. And we, you know, we need to be concerned about them. And then she kind of shoehorned some stuff about the ways that um, trans black trans women can be toxic towards um, trans people, but she, her, her, her point was, and the way that I took it is that we, like, we as trans, trans women need to back up off of cis women. We need to back up off of them and, you know, l- acknowledge their pain and let them have their pain. 
And I'm not gonna lie, like the first time I watched it, like the whole panel was good, but when it got to that part, I was like, I don't know, I don't know about this. Like it didn't, uh-huh. it, like I had to watch it a few times because when she said the first statement, like black cis um, women don't owe anybody anything, like the, the physical response of that is like, well, bitch, I ain't hear anything after that. Cause well, yeah, that- so then that's what gagged me too, sis, was when, when, when the part where she said, well, um, black cis woman don't owe a shit. Let me say, and then she re- emphatically said they don't owe a shit. And it made me feel like, like, what do you mean they don't owe a shit? It was like she was really asking, saying that they don't have any duty to do anything to us. It was very like giving the reason for people to not give a fuck about our lives or our death. It was just really like interesting to me. But anyway, go ahead, sis. Yeah. So, and I actually had to watch it a couple of times because I, like I said, the first time I watched it, my first response was to turn off my ears after she said that because I was just like, girl, you tripping on that. But right. at the end, the one, the one panelist, Autumn, and the other panelist, Mojo, kind of came back in after she said what she had to say and kind of cleaned it up. And then they ended. So let me say this. So Hope Giselle, I will say, I want to say before, before I want to just, the lioness just wants to say for a moment, her little piece on this part. Um, Hope Giselle is someone that I respect as a community person. She is someone that I think is a very dynamic person. And I think that her anointing makes room for her. I just think that maybe her, her critique at times could be sharp. And then we'll get more into that part later. But for mm-hmm. now, I just want to say, um, that what we're saying right now is not to analyze. We're just talking about our first reaction. There right. have been conversations with Hope since then that have helped us get a further understanding of where she's coming from. That, and that's the reason why. And, and in that conversation is how we got permission to discuss her today. So right. for those of you who are thinking this is just messiness, this is actually us with the permission of the person we worked through the issue with, giving permission for us to now unpack it so people can so we can model behavior on what conflict resolution looks like in community and how correction can happen and get misinterpreted and how everyone can be better after everyone understands what happened right so boom we watched the video and then i think later that day we did our live um we praised the video but i believe the both of we both of us had strong critiques about that particular statement Mm-hmm. Um, black tra- and basically our our position was that that premise is incorrect because black tra- the black tra- black cis women do owe trans black trans women something they owe us uh, they owe us to not um, be complicit um, in the transphobia that they enact against us or they they owe us to not be transphobic to us to use their cis privilege. To even though they have trauma and um, they go through a lot and nobody's there for them, they still carry cis privilege. They can still weaponize their cisness in ways fact. that are harmful to Black trans. That, and that's not an opinion; that's a fact. And I believe that's where we um, we kind of push back against, and we kind of ha- we we'll get to that. Okay, so we put the we put the live out. Um, we put the live out. So then, like a couple of days later, um, I think it kind of got more steam because as more people in community saw the video, there were other reactions to that particular comment uh, from you know big, like tr- like prominent um, black trans women. And then I think I wrote a comment on um, I wrote like a status on my personal page that um, yes, black cis woman do owe black trans women the um they owe them to not be um transphobic to them or to um create situations that are transphobic to black trans like you owe us that so i had i had the, i had the status i put it on my facebook oh no 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 let me let me go get the status because I, I just want to i'm gonna get it because i just want to be clear i don't want to um, parse out any words so yeah, so I wrote a status um, on my personal page, which I then share on um, the box number five twelve podcast page that 
Um, don't let one myopic comment from the Grapevine TV panel fool you. Black cis women do owe Black trans women something. Black cis women owe us to not contribute to our oppression, period. And um, I put that, so after we did the live, I took that on um, status, I took that status, screenshot of it, and put it on the box number 512 podcast. Um, so then after I did that, um, like a couple of hour or two later, Hope commented on the the status. So what? yeah, so Hope comment on the status. Look, girl, um, trying to add a little mysterious because we've talked about this a few times. But I want y'all to really understand, like, that we are on our own platform. And my sister posted up something regarding, not even specifically talking about her, but it was a, a post where she was talking about intersect. Let's have an intersectional conversation. Definitely hinting to or quoting something that Hope said, to be fair. Right, right, right. So Hope, um, and I think I put that intersectional, I made that comment, one, because because it was what Hope said, but also when we did our um, live show, our Grown Black Trans Women Talk Live that same Friday, we had both said that it was ironic that you're saying that this comment that you made um, is intersectional when it actually isn't, but the conversation as a whole is an intersectional conversation. Because we are Black people, so then uh, talking about our deaths is conversational. Talking about how the community uh, encourages, or not even that the community uh, in some way tacitly allows our deaths to continue without an outcry. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, she was trying to paint what we're saying with this really broad brush, but if you really unpack it, we're just trying to ask that the people that say they care about us are accountable. It is intersectional because we are Black women, but also we're Black people and Black women and Black Black women, Black female people know the plight. And so for them to not see us as, for us to talk about us and for Hope to put the narrative in that moment we uh, out that that wasn't intersectional is what I think upset me about what she said on the blog. But now in uh, on this post, my sister posted up, Hope responded, and then the conversation ensued. Go ahead, sis, keep us going. So I think I'm gonna only start with the first comment because I can kind of... Um paraphrase the rest but the, fir the first comment that she said is please at me y'all i'm open to critique and in no way do i think i'm above it but it's grinding my gears at this point being blindsided on my timeline with your opinions of something i said with no shame because it feels like shade so then my um my first response is um and i directly added hope you are hurt and no 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 that's not the first one that was the second one um, it's never shade, but when you put opinions out there, you have to expect to be critiqued, especially if it's harmful to the community. None of us in this work are above critique. The fact that you have no shame when community members have legitimate concerns speaks um, values. Um, and then um, she went on to respond that um, we should call her in. And she said she didn't have shame for speaking up uh, for the betterment and understanding of black women as a whole and that um the pan the panel or say that we seem we we don't seem to have like an empathy trip like we couldn't understand the empathy and the traumas um outside of our experiences and um that you know her stance didn't change on what she said and that i should have been woman enough well she didn't say i shouldn't have been one enough. she said only one of the panelists was woman enough to come and um talk to her and um bas basically basically my my response um to what hope said has not changed from when we first had our reaction you do feel like there's no evolution for you or that or maybe there's not enough time or not enough that could be done in an amount of time for there to be a change. Does that make sense? Well, or are you upset? Because I think also, too, wasn't there like a doubling down? I think, didn't you say that there was a live at some point? Yeah, so before so before the status, um, there were there were lives before we even got to my comment where other community, other prominent Black trans women in community critiqued her position. Or, uh, and I think she got a blowback from from what she said. So she did like a series of lives and videos, like 
well, y'all can be mad and I said what I said and I like very much in that vein of things. Um, instead of really taking the time to engage with people's critiques on how people felt. Um, so that so that was also that also happened in between the time of the episode coming out all the way to me putting this the the screenshot screenshot up on our page and us having our back and forth conversation because at that particular time I kind of felt that I needed to say something in, in order to still push back against what she said she said like sis I know it's I said what you said I said what I said but what you said is still problematic it's still it's still problematic because it's not like we as trans folks, even though we can, we can understand um, the trauma that Black cis women go through, we are not the privileged people in this situation. Like, Black cis women, even with all of their oppression and the, the traumas that are inflicted on them by Black cis men and by the larger cis world, they are still cis. We are not. So I think we don't, we don't, like we can be empathetic and we can understand their pain, but we the big in the bigger picture we don't have to because we are not the ones being transphobic to us. They're being transphobic to us, and it's harming us in real ways. And then also to, the, to unpack that just one step further, we're being incredibly empathetic to them, and they aren't giving a damn. As a matter exactly. of exactly, they're not even really caring about whether we live or die. Right. Or without that, we have rights or privileges or rules or anything to protect our existence. So I, 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 I beg to differ in that we have to take our privilege and give it to them. Rather, they need to take their privilege and share with us. We are their sisters. They just have to acknowledge us, as I said previously. Now, sis, back to this conversation on the Instagram um, I was following along. Did you want to continue? Because I would like to read where I got in. Because at some point, I had to tag in, guys. Okay, so I had, um, so I, so yeah, I basically summarized what I said back and then um, some other people that follow our page came up and even those that kind of knew her and were, you know, kind of, you know, had history with her, like, you know, I love you, sis, but like, not only were you wrong, you're, you are now a public figure, so you have to be open to critique. So then I'll turn it over to you where you came in. Word. And so then when I saw the thread, actually, I, um, I actually, sis, sis was like, sis, look, check out the thread. Because we often do that to each other. We both are co, um, we both co, co run the account. And so there are times where she's marketing or putting up um, pictures or whatever. And I do the same. It's, I'm, times where I'm liking and hearting different things that I see in the community and same for her. And that allows us to have a greater reach without all both of us or without one of us trying to carry that burden. So we share it anyway. Um, when I, so she was like, sis, you know, they comment, someone does a comment on the, on the poll, on the post. And so I went and I read the thread and by the time I had gotten through the thread, all that Brianna had described happened. So it wasn't like, um, cause if you, for those of you who are going to look at the thread, it's going to look like box number five to a podcast is just continuously responding. But if you pay attention to the ads, I actually acknowledge that it's me when I come on. So to the post, um, I said t tagging in ATL at ATL lioness tagging in here. I think dialogue like these are important. And now that I know you are open to being tagged in an opinion about you, I will. It was only done in consideration for the fact that I didn't want to directly call out a black trans woman I didn't know, but what I deemed as apologist logic for cis women to not give a damn about the children they birthed. I do understand on an ac academic level some of the things that you say, but sometimes I feel like they dog whistle that you are a sensible trans woman that gets it. Meaning she gets what we cis folks trying to say to them trannies. That you have this unique ability for cis, to speak for cis people's fears and issues and to check us about our fallacious logic. And I probably incorrectly concluded that you 
pandering this behavior to that audience, to, to pander to that audience. Maybe I was wrong. I hadn't been given permission to go forth and address it head on. Now that I know you are open to such critique, that's dope. You have a right to your opinion as we do ours. I do wish that you didn't feel the need to be the one to check the community in moments when we could have just ha used a hug or maybe even drove home the real issue, which is this man killing us. Pause there. The, I made a point of saying that point because I wanted her to really grasp that that was a panel that was hosted by a by the grapevine, which is a very prominent black um, media platform. Right. And they were taking the opportunity after a, after a period where they didn't necessarily get it right in their coverage of trans people. They took the opportunity to let a trans person select a panel of folk and hope happened to be chose to be one of those people. And in that moment, I was reminding her that her tie, that what she was saying was a distraction from the real point was we are having murders happening almost every other or every couple of days now. And it, and, and it's to the point where even our friends and associates are desensitized. It's almost like people want us to stop talking about it, but it's getting worse. And the more it gets worse, the more quiet people get. So in this moment where we're, we've been given this panel of nine trans women, that never really happens. But so for this panel of nine trans women to be on there and to be standing there trying to give their opinion and for this woman to take time to cape for cis women, it just was just profoundly disappointing to me. Right. So I just wanted to give and that, that. And that's that. why people were upset with you. That's why people were upset. It wasn't that we're upset that you voiced your point. It was like, what is she doing taking this moment to make this point? Not this moment. This isn't a general trans issue moment. This isn't a cis hetero community building moment. No, I, I know that it was edited and I've heard from other people that that wasn't the, that the, the clips that are online. That wasn't necessarily the full interview, that there may have been other things said. And so uh, that is why my opinion is it's a little bit shifted, but we'll get to that later. Let, back to my post. Oh, back one sentence up. I do wish you didn't feel the need to be the one to check the community in moments when we could have used a hug or maybe even just drove home the real issue, issue which is cis men killing us. You rant about cis women, just your rant about cis women distracted me. That's all. And then I said, meh, I'm over it at this point, but I thank, but thanks for being direct. I like that energy. And, and, and so to what I want to say in my last part on this is, to hope, I like that energy, boo boo. Um, at least my response to this post. I like my energy. I like that energy, boo boo. I like that you took the opportunity to to talk to us head on. I like that you didn't do inbox games and all that audio recording and voice memos. Cause see, YouTube got me shook. I'm looking at how them people get down on that girl. <laughs> oh, oh, bitch, y'all is using this technology like assassins, bitch. So I don't know, but. I respect that, she, that for hope that she just confronted it directly and said whatever. I want to just push back on the notion because then there was other there was other parts to that conversation and I, you know if you Brianna if you want to go more in depth we can on word for word what was said. But. No, no, I don't even I don't even think we have to do that because I I feel like we got the um, point the across. Of it at this point. Right. Yeah. Right. And so our, I, like our positions are our positions, right? Our positions are our positions, but I want to just close it out real fast on saying, I just want Hope to know that what we say on this podcast is our, is our genuine opinion, but our opinions aren't founded in anything but our fucking opinions and maybe a bit of, of wisdom and a bit of experience and a bit of maybe um, the opportunity to connect with elders and maybe man, not saying that you haven't had don't don't have any of those things, but you don't have our points of view. And right. that's the beauty in community building is being able to connect with people that may see things just a little bit differently. And that's why I want to thank you for having the opportunity to be open with us. And I want to say, I just want you to remember to be be intentional about sharpening your critique. Be intentional about making sure that you're the best advocate that you can be and that you are representing the people you say you're representing and not your own self-interest. And I'm going to say that again. Be intentional that you are representing the people that you say you're representing and not your own self-interest. 
which means if a lot of your content and if a lot of what you have to say is at, is directed to, if you're talking at the people you're supposed to be advocating for, you miss the point. You are not supposed to be talking at the people you're supposed to be advocating for. You're supposed to be listening to the people that you're supposed right. to be advocating for. You see right. the action difference? Talking versus talking at versus listening to. And I just want you to remember that as you go in your journey as an advocate. Right. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And I think I'm just going, I'm just going to, to give like a couple of points and then we can end this topic. Uh, but before I even do that, um, I want to say this. Um, so, um, the lioness, Samaya, and myself, you know, we've been in this game for a minute. I've been I've been doing activism, particularly around Black trans women, since about 2009. Um, Samaya has been doing it longer than me. So we're not, we're not chastising you or we're not like reading you or trying to come at we're really trying to come at you as big sister um as big sisters who were on the same trajectory as you because there you know there have many girls there have been many girls that have come before hope that have been on the trajectory to be exactly where she's at um so we you know we're not saying this like out of shade or we're trying to get where you are um, but we, we're, as somebody that has been through it and been through the ebbs and flows and the, the ups and downs, it would be irresponsible for us as elders to not, um, you know, hold you um, and call you in and just give you some tips as you move forward. Because I meant what I said when I responded, I do want to see you evolve. I do want to see your evolution. You are booked and you're you're going on bigger and bigger platforms and you're going to be out there. So like I said, it's never shade. I want to see you evolve. I want to see all of my sisters get out there and to um, be intelligent, um, trans women, articulate, analytical. But when you make mistakes and you make mistakes publicly, sis, we have to hold you accountable, especially when those mistakes harm the Black trans community on platforms that aren't particularly friendly or have a history of being trans antagonistic like the Great Bombers was. So I wanted to preface by saying this. My first thing I want to say, you are a public figure. You put yourself in this position. So what that means is you got to be open to critique, even if it comes from your own community. Like um, the li like the um, the point that the lioness just made. If you are advocating for a group of people and you make a misstep, and the, and we're not talking about like one off um, shady hateful comments that can happen when you're just you know in the position and you're getting your shine. When you have multiple people coming to you with the same critique, with the same complaint, you kind of have to grow thicker skin and step away from your ego of course your ego is going to be bruised because in your mind you think you're doing the right thing but if a community of that you that the same people that you represent are coming together saying i have a problem with this thing you said you have to step outside of yourself and and be mature enough in your position to realize those people's perspective and is it possible that there is a valid, that their perspective is valid? And nine times out of 10, after you come <clears throat> away from your own hurt, you could see that, that, you know, I do see where they're coming from. I do see how this um, put, place the burden on trans women when one, the burden does not need to be placed on them. And two, this is a conversation centering black trans women. So you really now, have can I say this? Because now I, 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 what I hear right now, so now we do know that most of our listeners, a lot of our, well, not most, a lot of our listeners are allies. And so for right. them right now that are wondering, like, damn, they is eviscerating this girl. Like, I don't, I think what people are, I, if I were listening to this, my first thought would be, is this, is it just this simple one comment? Like, what is it? Because now, if I didn't know, I would think that there was, because there has to be a deeper reason why you feel the need to make 
while we both have feel the need to have commented. Now I addressed our comments or whatever, and you know, I addressed the, the video, but we've now have done like a, almost a three part segment on this lady. And like, I can hear in my spirit, I can hear people saying, well, what, it, what, what, what is it that hope represents? Like to take it off of her, what is it that hope represents that it's problematic that we are trying to address by having this conversation. I think what I'm glad you brought that up. I think what it represents and this, this is really not about hope. It is about what she represents and what it is, is um, younger black trans women who get the popularity and get the attention um in a short amount of time but their their analysis on particular topics don't um match the the amount of popularity that they get so what happens is a lot of times you get these big opportunities and you get out there prematurely and you say the wrong thing and it happens to ever it happens to all of us it's happened to me early in my career where i've gotten opportunities to get on platforms and i was at my depth and i either said the wrong thing or i didn't i didn't say enough and it happens it happens to all of us but when you do get out there and you do say the wrong thing you kind of again you have to step away from your ego and you really have to um really get de- like get down in the trenches and really give value to other people's um, perspectives of what you said if people are really critiquing what you said and not you as a person now if people are being vicious and making personal attacks that's different and i made it very clear in our interactions that i'm attacking what you said i'm not attacking you as a person and it's a it's a difference it's a difference I'm attacking what you said. I'm not attacking you as a person. When I said my optic comment, that was in reference to your comment because it was my optic. Because somebody that has the the, the right um, framework and the right analysis of black of black trans women in reference to black cis women in the larger black cis community wouldn't have gotten on a platform like that and said some of the things that you said that's distracted from black trans women. But that analysis, it comes with um, time, it comes with experience, it comes with going through trials by fire, it goes through toughening your skin, because you as a public figure are putting, or you are purposely putting yourself in positions to be on these very huge um, hyper visible platforms where people are going to have things to say and you have to be able to um roll with the punches and learn and over time it's a skill where you can learn when somebody is giving you like a valid critique that's not based in trying to shade you as a person but we're really critiquing you because you're going to continue to represent us you're going to continue to um be the face so it's incumbent on you to really listen um talk to other thought leaders in the community, get consensus. Because I know for me, now I'm at the point where before I do anything, if I haven't ran it by a couple of Black trans women before I get on a platform and talk about it, I'm probably not going to talk about it because I know I have a response. I know it's my, my responsibility not to harm my community with the things that I say and do on public platforms. And yes, I play, and yes, I key, and yes, I have a sense of personality, but when it comes time to get on these larger platforms and these more serious platforms and hit my points, I I, I have the consensus of the um, community. And, if, and also, I wanted to say, it's a difference between having a view or opinion that's kind of an outlier from community or having a position that is in direct opposition to the community and that is harmful to the community. And I don't think that, you know, what you said of Black cis women don't owe anybody anything. I don't think that's an outlier opinion. In my opinion, I think it's something that's directly adverse to the goals of Black trans women, especially Black trans women who are um, trying to figure out ways how to build community with Black cis women um, above all of the bullshit. 
and really build and really show that you as a black cis woman be as a black trans woman though i wasn't born with a vagina we are both we are all still impacted by massage noir we are all still impacted by intimate partner violence we are all like we are impacted by the same things because we, we all move in the world in feminine bodies as black women so you just you just but again that's something that comes with um trial by fire um sharpening your analysis get getting consensus before you just jump out there and say something and not knowing the risk of how it's going to be perceived by community because if you don't have if you don't have community um behind you supporting you and propping you up then you're going to just be like Candace Owens. And I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just, you're going to be somebody out there that is like the token or that's being a representation, but you're not really connected to community. So that was, um, so my first point, so back to my first point, if you are a public figure, which you are, you are now a public figure, you, ha you have to engage valid critique. You can't you can't be out there and expect not for a, at least the community not to say something to you when they have a valid critique. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add? Because I'm trying to think of my second point. Girl, the empath in me right now is wondering how I would feel, and I just want to say. To hope again and as a little aside in this moment we care and um this the purpose of this analysis and this breakdown is for us to genuinely give you the feedback that you you requested but also to let you know that you have support and you have people that are rooting for you and that this to take this as a, a compliment that we're taking the time to give you this analysis and to share this conversation with the world because that's how much we know we want you to win. Go ahead, Brian. So, so the second thing I wanted to impart is when you go on these platforms, you got to know your audience. You have you have to know who is going to watch your videos because that's going to inform your messaging, and that's going to th that's going to inform how you analyze, how you uh, break stuff down, and really how you get your message across so in that grapevine interview that audience was black cis people so we don't need we don't we already know the audience that watches the grapevine tv there are some people that get the conversation but if you go look through their comments there are a lot of people that watch the grapevine that are resistant to anything queer let it alone anything black and trans that would not have been a platform where I'm like parroting anti-trans or anti-queer talking pieces like um, black cis women um, don't have to give a, a fuck about nobody or even some of the comments that you made about like buck breaking. Those are talking points that are usually given by like those whole tech black men. And I, for me, I wouldn't have repeated them knowing that audience knowing that the end goal I, you know, is, I was confused by that too sis i was like wait i've heard them using that as a way to say talking about the feminizing of black men and it's almost like she used that logic that would dog whistle to that audience of people to say okay tune in because i'm the sensible one that get what you're trying to tell these trannies that's what i was referencing in right yeah go ahead girl. like you have to you have to know your audience because that because and knowing your audience also sharpens your analysis like you shouldn't just be like going on there parroting stuff or saying stuff that you heard you should already have a point of view you should have already have an analysis so when they give you uh and diamond styles talked about this because she did a video talking about um the conversation and particularly her critiques of hope but you 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 have to know your audience, especially going into a platform that's not necessarily for us. Even though the grapevine was open to this conversation, the fact that they purposely edited stuff out of their conversation—I'm not going to give names away, of who, you know—but stuff was edited out. Tells me that even though they had this conversation, allegedly, 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 
even though they allegedly did this, they might not necessarily have, they're not willing to go all the way with us. I won't say they won't, they don't have our best interests at heart, but there, there's a little bias. So I would be vigilant of the things that I say, and I would only say things that um, um, hit, bring the message home of centering Black trans women and protecting the interests of Black trans women. And like the things that you said didn't necessarily achieve that goal. In fact, they were counter to it. In fact, they were antagonistic towards it. But again, this comes with experience. Like I said, I've been, I've been doing this and I've been in rooms where it was primarily pro cis black and you live and you learn. Sometimes you get burned. That's why for me, I prefer doing stuff with other black trans creators because I know at the end of the day, I can trust them to have my best interests at heart as a black trans person. And if I'm going into anything non-trans, I already have my list of demands for, you know, this is what I'm going to talk about. This is what I'm not going to talk. Like, but again, that comes with experience. But you got to know your audience when you, because you don't want to go somewhere where you're, where they don't have your best interests and your words can be skewed. And I think my third thing I want to leave off with, so, so let's say, oh, my third thing, which is not even the last thing. I saw you a lot saying, well, it wasn't my intent to do this. It wasn't my intent to do that. As a leader, as a public figure, you need to be, you need to know, in addition to knowing your audience, you need to know your in, the intent of what you're saying, and you are responsible for knowing the impact. And I've seen a lot of people um, say that because you know I've I've had a, a couple of squabbles with um, folks who have done things that um, that rub me the wrong way, you know, on a public platform. And their whole thing is, well, it wasn't my intent to do this, and it wasn't my intent. It's like, well, you you as a public person, as a visible person, and now you are. And like in this instance, this is about the Hope Giselle situation. But like we said earlier, this is bigger than her. This is for any person that is will be in your position in a, a couple months from now, a year from now. You are responsible for the impact of the things that you say and do, whether you intended to do it or not. You starting off with black cis women don't owe you anything, even though you didn't intend it to be received that way, it doesn't matter. You have to be, and again, knowing the impact of the things you say and the, the possible ways that, that can be perceived, that comes with experience, that comes with sharpening your analysis and knowing the logical links of the words and how you say things and what phrase you say first and how you say, like that comes with experience, but you, you are accountable for the impacts of your actions. You just are. There's a whole area of law dedicated to the impact of your actions. It's called negligence. You being negligent in your actions, even though you didn't mean to do it, it fell below a standard of reasonable care. And when it comes to Black trans women, anybody claiming to be a representative of Black trans women, even if you don't mean to be a representative, by virtue of you getting on a platform that's wildly popular, that all of these Black cis women know about, we as Black trans people, we're expecting you and not respectability politics. Now let's 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 make that dis distinction. You can be angry, you can get cussed. We're not policing your respectability politics, saying you have to behave in a certain way. What we're saying is your message. You need to be mindful that its impact is not to harm Black trans women by telling Black cis folks that because of their trauma and the stuff that they go through, they don't have to give about the give a fuck about the shit that they do to trans women, Black trans women, on a daily basis. Anytime they interact with trans women, you have to be my and That's I see why. and I see so many people, not even just hope, other people that when they get when they get out there prematurely and they say the wrong thing, well, it was not my intent. I didn't. It doesn't matter. You are, you you are on a public you are a, on a public platform. That's a privilege. You don't you don't have to be on this platform. It's a privilege. So just as just as easy as they build you up, they can tear you down. 
because it's not guaranteed. So what you have to do is make sure you're managing the, the relationships that matter and that you're really looking out for the people that you say you represent. And my last thing, I'm going to give you what you could have done even if you had your own perspective, because like I said, we have our perspective and I don't know if you've changed on your position, but if you haven't, you can still have your position. All you had to do to avoid this backlash, all you had to do was reverse a couple of phrases to still get your point across, but not like obliterate like black trans women. All you had, you could have said it something like this. You know, black trans women, you know, we have empathy for them because they go through a lot. Um, they're often the mule for black culture as a whole and unappreciated by black men and disregarded or ignored. And we get that. And while we still acknowledge black cis women and we hold them, you do have to encase you you as cis people with cis black cis women still with cis privilege have to care about the transphobia that you enact on your black trans sisters who are still in community with you who are still in ranks with you who are still side by side with you in terms of overall oppression boom because her whole thing was the empathy piece by flipping that phrase by starting by not starting off with black trans women don't give a shit about nobody but easing people into what because at the end of the day i don't believe we're on the wrong we're on the opposite side of things i think i believe that hope and all of the people that were against what she said i believe that we all want the the same thing but the way that you say it the way that you ease people into your point, the way that you construct your analysis, it makes a difference how it will be received when it's heard, especially by other um, trans women. And if your main point was for us to um, empathize with them, I just felt like it was a, a better way that you could have said that to avoid this backlash. And yeah, we should empathize. We should um, be uh, empathetic to them. However, we don't carry cis privilege. So whether we do or we don't, um, it's still incumbent upon all Black cis people, Black cis men and Black cis women to not use their, their leverage to enact transphobia against um, Black trans women. So I'm just going to leave that there. Um, like I said, it's no shade. It's no bad blood over here. I want to see you evolve. I want to, because I do believe you have a gift. I do believe you um, have an anointing, but it just needs to be sharpened. It needs to be sharpened. And when people are critiquing you uh, and when people are trying to guide you because you are, like I, I've seen you for like the past couple of years, but you're relatively new. Um, you ha I think you should, I think you should be, open to the possibility that we are all not out to get you or we all just can't take you. We want to help you because what happens is if you don't open up, you're going to be on an island by yourself and you're going to burn out. And that happens to all of us. So we want, so we want to let you know that we are here and it's not shade and that we really want you to win. But you, ha you have to be mindful of how the things that you say and do, given your visibility, will ultimately impact your community. And if you have people in the comments, people who are, have historically, Black cis people who have been historically against trans people and who are going out of their way to be um, willfully transphobic saying, oh girl, see, I can rock with her because she gets it, she respects um, uh, black trans women, we're real women. You got to sit back and read the room. You got to, you have to read the, is the, are those the type of people that you want on your side? People who aren't going to give a damn about trans people anyway, but you just said something to confirm their bias that they already had about us. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Sis, did you have anything you wanted to bring into the room? I just wanted to just <clears throat> end it with everyone remembering that when we created this, the goal was to have grown Black trans women talk, but also the goal was to show that 
the types of conversations, the level that we're at is where is is far beyond what is being shown in media in the world. We are deeply intellectual human beings that are very complicated in our feelings, that are now at the point, even in movement work, where we're discussing our strategic positioning and the way we with the way we talk in media, the kinds of gigs we take. We really have come a long way as far as us being able to have folk like Hope Giselle and some other folks that have now begun to get a light from mainstream media. We are lucky to have these people and we're lucky to be able to have conversations about them, critiquing how they do what they do. And I just want to bring into the space that energy because I am grateful to live in a time because as a, as a, as a soon to be 37 year old woman next month, I have lived long enough in this journey that began at 18 for me to know that this is a blessed time that we live in. And I want to be, I want to send that little bit of love into the ecosystem because for those of us in my age group and older, we've watched a lot of people who are just as talented and gifted and maybe even have their own issues like a hope or, 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 or even myself or uh, an Aeon. The fact that we are able to sit here and have these conversations is a testament to the hard work, labor, and lives that came before us. Even the lives of these women that we lose sometimes in conversations when we talk about deeper community shit, we want to remember that we come from a legacy of people that had the courage to be bold enough to stand in how they feel and to be unapologetic about how any, how, how how that is impacted by the world. You know why? Because to be truly free is to really, really be able to throw off the fear that a lot of people carry about certain conversations and situations and things. Us being trans gives us a unique ability to unpack and unbox that fear. And in this conversation, what I like that was happening was, I believe that this would come now. For those of you who who don't know my sister Bree, Bree can come off like she is reading back boots. I'm but a Sagittarius. Really, I can't help it. Everything I say is going to sound shady, bitch. I can't help it. And because of that, I think sometimes she is misunderstood. And I am grateful that we are in partnership with each other because she can bring an, a, 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 a laser-like precision to the analysis that is very, very necessary sometimes. And the reason why we felt it was necessary to go in-depth hope in this way was because we actually, as I said earlier, we see it for you. And we know that this is a monumental time where the girls are starting to get more and more awareness. And we know that now black, cis, hetero folk are not beginning to listen to you. But what we're afraid of is that part of it is because you're saying to them what they want to hear. Right. The sense of our actual lived experiences in truth by positioning yourself as this unique, exceptional, just just this 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 set apart person that has the unique ability to be able to understand. And I the rest of them trainees don't get it, but I do. And I don't think that that is your intention. I don't think that that is your intention. I think that the world is ugly and it puts us in positions to play the token role. And then when you're asked to be, get the speaking gig and they and in pre-production when they're asking you the questions and they are trying to get your perspective on things and you say certain things and they get a little quiet and you say other things and then they get a little more interested and then before you know it you find yourself in order to maintain your prominence that you have become now an apologist for something that isn't quite exactly what you meant but because you're so busy trying to censor and you're so busy trying to acquiesce and you're so busy trying to um, mold what you're trying to say into something that is palatable for someone else, you end up sometimes trimming off 
and that and you trying to fit it into that little small box that they can receive, you end up trimming off sometimes some of the goodness, some of the good, necessary, vital nutrients that is the core of our message. So it's not that we disagree specifically or wholly with anything that you said. It is that it needs to have a certain amount of depth and honesty and accuracy when you're talking about community issues. It can't be a soundbite designed to make sh- ensure your next speaking gig is sound. Right. It has to be things that are related to the topic. So in this situation, my only critique was that this panel was about the murders that were happening and what strategically black, the larger black community could do to help these murders get resolved or even what do they, it was basically kind of those conversations where they set you up and go, so what do you need? In that moment, that conversation could have went anywhere. In that moment though, particularly that particular weekend was a very violent, horrible time. Last we got news of some very horrible deaths back to back to back to back that weekend, which is why the grapevine had that particular form. So we are a very we were in a very raw place, and to see all of that black excellence, all that beautiful black woman excellence, all that beautiful black trans woman excellence, was just phenomenal. It was just that one little part there that made it feel uncomfortable for me. And for me, that doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't sharp in your analysis. It doesn't mean, but it does mean perhaps maybe it's time to just have a just just a more a more sisterhood conversation with girls in the community to see where our heads at, to see what we're actually trying to say. Because sometimes when you say the community needs to, because you do that sometimes. You do, you do this blanket, well, what, 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 what we or what, what trans women or trans folk or we, and it, it is this you being able to talk at us, at us. And I don't want, and I, and I, and I want to stress that point because we, and if you're advocating for, for us, you need to be listening to us. And 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 it, I think that my sister, in her analysis, is what, what she's really, really saying is, is that listening to us means even when you're being critiqued, right. for you to be able to stand in a place where you are able to receive that with love without somebody having to go out of their way to tell you, we don't, we're not trying to tear you down. Now, you may not have known that, and we live in a world, because I'm looking at that damn YouTube, like I said, girl, and it is insane to me how them people are tearing each other down on this. So I get that we live in a world where you have to be mindful of that. But I would like to say, and I would like to hope that Box Number 512 podcast, Grown Black Trans Woman Talk, I would like to say that we here are in the business of trying to uphold our sisters, if nothing else. Because we know that we're all we got at the end of the day, girl. So I love you. I know that my sister loves you. And we hope that as a community, we can get beyond these minor miscommunications to get to the truth. Because at the end of the day, there never was any beef. There never will be any beef. Why? Because there's more than enough room out here for everybody to eat. There's more than enough food. There's more than enough resources. There's more than enough. I serve a more than enough God, and I'm grateful that I have an abundant life with, an, with a co-host that has abundant life, and we are doing well, and we wish you well, because we see that you're doing well, and we're grateful for that. Amen. Yeah, and I just wanted to reiterate, the reason that we are we decided to have this conversation on this public platform is because we need this to be a demonstration um, for our community that this is how grown women handle situations and have conversations and for people outside of the community to let y'all know that we are big girls and we can handle our own stuff and this is how grown we are right so it's because so many times in community stuff like fissures like this will happen and if they are not addressed they will turn into something nasty and ugly and right now we as a black trans woman can't afford to be divided uh, amongst each other or um, in separate um, groups because we are all being killed off. We are all being oppressed. So we need to work through our issues, um, figure out if we can find some type of common ground and um, unite with each other when we need to unite. 
So that that's part of the reason why I wanted to have it on this platform, just to model like how we how we discuss um, how we feel in our perspectives and to leave space for there to be some sort of resolve and sort of um, some sort of resolution. Because it is never shade and it shouldn't be shade amongst um, grown black trans women. So now that we close that out, I also have something else I want to get off my um, get off my chest, but I think this will be a little bit more quick, and I will be calling somebody's name out for this, but this will be more quick because it'll be obvious. And for this particular person, since they're not in community, um, it might be a little shade thrown in there. Um, so last week, I believe, yeah, on the show we talked about how Holly Berry did uh was going um, was go considering taking doing a role where she would be playing a trans man and after swift um action from the trans community in the alphabet mafia um she politely declined and apologized and she did what she was supposed to do so of course uh enemy to community the breakfast club uh talked about the topic on their show at first, they did the they did part one. They did the topic where they had people call in and comment should um, should um, of Holly Berry been forced to resign from her role as a trans man, and why can't she be, play a trans man? Side note: once again, uh, the Breakfast Club being trans antagonistic as a platform. Once again, and <laughs> gaslighting, gaslighting trans, the trans community like they don't know why it was problematic for Holly Berry to play that role. That's part one. So point number two, the Breakfast Club follows up with their should she or shouldn't she by having a community member, quote unquote, come and discuss why um, Holly Berry's role was why her taking the role was problematic in the first place. Let me start by saying this. I don't have a problem with what um, David, and the community member was David Johns, who was the executive director on MBJC, and who has made, who makes regular appearances on The Breakfast Club um, to talk about LGBT issues. So they had him on there to discuss the issues which I don't have a problem with any of his points, right? My point is, why do you keep coming to that particular platform, knowing that history they have with trans people as the representation of the trans community? Like, like stop doing that. Like, stop, stop doing that. Like, that, to me, that is inherently problematic, and I will tell you why. The first thing that is the first reason it's problematic is because communities members have told you once before, and I know I'm the main one, that you need to stop going on that platform, a platform that has been so transphobic and so trans antagonistic every chance they get. Stop going on that platform as a cis black gay man representing trans women or representing trans men in that particular case or representing the trans community you are not trans you should not be um speaking for us you did it you did it um during that whole malik yoba yoba debacle where you were talking um over the one black trans woman that was in the room you did it again um during that whole flame monroe debacle. like this is a pattern for you so one, stop, stop, stop taking up space um, and being a representation of transness and trans people when you have the access and you have the means to actually get trans people to go there and talk about our own issues and be the face of our own issues. Like you continue to do what Holly Berry would have done had she taken that role. You are not a trans person. You should not be speaking to trans issues. And my second thing is really sit back and think about why the Breakfast Club feels more comfortable with you as a cis black gay man coming to talk, to continuously talk about black trans issues than 
having an actual trans person talk about something that directly impacts them as a trans person. Like, stop doing it. And, like, you continue to do it. And he's another one that, oh, I'm above critique and my intent is right. And I'm like, but actual trans people are telling you to stop doing it. Because... Now, let me ask you. This is just me listening. You you said you you said he's another one that acts like he's above critique. Can you give an example of that? Well, he blocked me on uh, Instagram because he was... <laughs> The girl is, 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 we don't have to get no, he blocked me on Instagram because he, um, he shared a post from that horrible ass Flame Monroe interview talking about, she's right. She's making sense. I'm like, nigga, did you not watch the rest of the interview where she was misgendering people and, um, telling them that it was okay for them to disrespect trans people? Got you. And we're posting clips from her interview. Like, are you crazy? Yeah, someone that, once again, is taking up space, representing an analysis that, that, is not, I, that is not something that the community upholds from someone who could arguably not be said be, be representing the same community as you think she is. So the point that I'm trying to say is, for him, I get what you're saying. It's like, why do you insist on feeling like it is your position to speak for us as if we don't have mouths, as if you don't know trans women that can talk you under a bus about us because we are us. Right. You know trans woman. You know Nala. You know Tony Michelle. And it's nothing to get on the phone to call. And you live in New York. It's nothing for you to get on the phone and call and be like, hey girl, Breakfast Club asked me for an interview, but, or even for this trans man situation. I know you know Teak Milan. Or if you don't Marquis, know Marquise, I know Tick knows Marquise or Tick knows the other black trans men. It, it would be so much more impactful to have actual people speak for trans people on these platforms. And uh, once again, the Breakfast Club acting like they are allies, acting like they get it, purposely creating spaces for people to be trans antagonistic. So when I saw that video, my it just set my pussy on fire. I'm not, because this was like, here you go, mm-hmm. once again, demonstrating that, oh, it's another opportunity for me to be in a spotlight. It's like, do you even have black trans people that work at MBJC? Because the way you're carrying it on, I don't think that you do. Well, see, speaking of organizations that have unique stories, I just want to say, I think what we have to remember is that not everybody that from every organization is all just because they carry the name trans or LGBT. Right. Name, say it first. Just because they carry the name title, the title LGBT or whatever does not mean they are really truly doing the work to really advocate for us no they have a lot so what we have to know now is there is money to be made in the politicizing of our experience just like there is money to be made in the pathologizing of our experience there is money to be made in the politicizing in the commentary in the dialogue being a thought leader people want to know more and now the people that weren't really paying us attention previously all of a sudden go and they feel like they have PhDs in what it is to be trans because I've read a few books and I took some black feminist studies classes. And because I myself have enough friends that are trans to be able to feel like I can speak for them. But darling, I assure you, what would be a better ally in this moment would be the kind of ally that would take a step back and say, you know what? Thank you very much, Charlemagne Breakfast Club. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate this phone call. However, I have four or five, six girlfriends, the ones that I use to back up what I'm saying when I'm speaking wrong and getting jacked. Call one of them girls and have them come on because I promise you their analysis will come from a deeper depth than you as an observer, as an, as an admirer, as a supporter. You are not us. And I think that people that intend and they, they are getting this 
clout, as the young kids say, off right. of our Because you don't never talk about stuff impacting gay men. You always talking about our shit. Except for um, World AIDS Day. That's the, only, that's the only time. Well, I can't allege any of those things now. I don't know. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is that I want it to be known that we in this podcast are in the business of holding accountable people that are using their position and their title in what is considered a media appropriate job to speak for people and talk to people that don't have access to the same, the same set jobs. Your job in that place is to liaise with the community and get someone that is qualified to be able to speak for themselves. That to me is being a true and deeper ally than you now taking a gig because I have this job and the Breakfast Club has a relationship with my company. And so I'm gonna take every gig that comes because they live for me because I know how to make it palatable. Like if you were to look deeper, you would see that you're blocking the hard work of people that have dedicated their life and their life's work to making sure that the message is given clearly by confusing it with things that you heard secondhand. Right, because it's like, what are they What are they scared of sitting with um, smart black trans women that's going to say what needs to be said or they just feel comfortable with you? And you have to step outside of yourself and see that it, what you are doing subconsciously um, reads to cishet people who are intent on not being accepting of trans people that, oh, it's okay for a black cis man to talk about issues impacting trans people but, um, because they are men anyway. Like, come on. How are you having a conversation about visual representation, representation and the importance of trans visual representation and you're on the Breakfast Club in a YouTube video a black man talking to a black cis man talking about black trans people? What, the, what representation do you think that's showing to people? Like, so I, I see through what you're doing. Stop, Mr. Johns. Stop. Stop your shenanigans. So it's, a, it's enough um, Black trans women and Black trans men and Black non-binary folks that are in the Black community, that are familiar with The Breakfast Club, they know all of them because we all Black at the end of the day, that can get on that platform and hold their own. We don't need you gatekeeping or trying to finesse your relationship so you can get on there for the next World's AIDS Day. Like, stop it. Demonstrate what true allyship is. Get out of our way and let us, and let, uh, and if you are really in tune with community, you know, you would know that we don't fuck with that show. But it was just the language. Oh, here is a community represent Charlemagne. So yeah, I just I just had to say that. It's just like stop doing that. Stop doing that. It's more than enough of us out here that can get up there and do what needs to be done and represent ourselves. And I also think that's representative of how some black cis gay men gatekeep in the nonprofit world and make it hard for black trans women. And notice I said some make it hard for black trans women and black trans people to be all that we can be because they feel like oh it's taken away from my shine no it's not no it's not so that's all i have to say on that stop stop um stop standing in our way let us talk about our own stuff so transitioning to the last topic which I'm pretty sure it won't take that long because I thought the interview was going to be longer than what it was, but it was straight and it was to the point. Miss Jada and her husband got on Red Table Talk, honey, and she talked about her entanglement with August. Yes, Alcina. come on, entanglement. Shout out to Jada for bringing an, uh, an, um, a lesser used English word and bringing it back for the ones and twos. Come on, entanglement. Right. So, so, so what what did you think about I th I feel like we briefly talked about the the August Alcina situation. I can't remember on what medium, but we briefly talked about it, but I think I said I was waiting for the for this red table talk. So, what was your thoughts on the interview sis? 
So August Alcina, Jada Pinkett, Entanglement, Red Table Talk, Will and Jada. I want to start with, I, as a married woman, saw so beyond, now because I'm definitely not the open part, but I saw so much of my decade-long partnership and the way we communicate being displayed. They had a comfort, an ease, a kind of a, cause see, when you've been with somebody, or I would like to say uh, 10 years or more, you kind of get to the point where you, at some point you have been friends and you've been enemies and battles that, that no one won. And you realize that there is no win in a battle against yourself if this person is really a one flesh with you and you've truly embraced that notion that this is a partnership. I stress partnership because I think what Judah Jada and Will demonstrated was the ability for a relationship to evolve. One of the things I always say is that um, marriage is a contract that is constantly negotiated and renegotiated over a period of time. I think people hear what was said at the vows and they think that that's, and they, they think that those really broad, I will be with you through this and this and that. They think that those broad things are, are it. Because it, that, because if you think about it, those words are such big terms that they don't make sense. But for better or worse means I love you even when we've gotten to the place where we had a period where I love wavered and we had a fallen out or we decided to shift the way we negotiate our terms of our relationship. And so that's what I really got because I know in my relationship personally, not that we've never negotiated no shit like that. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, um, I, we negotiated so many other things. We both are a lot more liberal than we would have when we were in the beginning of our relationship about friends. Um, and I get how you as a couple can have worked through something and gotten to a place where everything is cool. And then somebody that thought they were going to upset the kingdom. Because now let me, let me tell you this now. Hold on, hold on. Anybody that's been in a long relationship, you understand me. We done been through too motherfucking much. We got too much tied together. Neither one of us will survive a breakup financially. And most importantly, most importantly, most importantly, our family, our lives, all of the things that we've done together is beautiful. Even if at the moment our interpersonal dynamic is not beautiful. Our life is beautiful. The thing that we have built is beautiful. And that is sometimes enough to get you through a rough patch. But in the rough patch, you may not like the other person. And I think that it's unhealthy and it's unreasonable to think that marriage has to be this undying love that from day to day perseveres beyond even the worst headaches and pains. It's like, no, there's going to be some days where it's like, I don't know why the fuck I did this. And I may not want to do this. But the reality that the, the, the Smith show was in, the, in that little tete-a-tete, and I love that they kept it cute. I love that they let people know it's none of their business. I love that she let Will speak. Unfortunately, I think that spoke to a deeper patriarchal thing, mm -hmm. that, she, that they, the world would not have accepted what she said had her husband not co-signed. However, we know that Will has a whole mistress and all that other shit anyway. So it's really funny that she still, while there's all kinds of visual evidence, that still never becomes a scandal that will, because this generally accepted, they kind of have an open relationship. Now, they had to cage the narrative in, oh, well, we were broken up at the time. And who's to say whether they were or they weren't? Because I know, like I said, relationships, long-term relationships are a journey over some jagged-ass rocks, bitch. So there are moments where it could have been like that. And I, I totally got it. And I totally chuckle and laugh. And when they were like bad marriage for life, I fell out. Anybody that has been married for a while, it's like after a while, you get to the place where I know I'm full of shit. I know you was, you full of them to wreck them. And so, but together, 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 this together, somehow this body that we've built functions. 
this thing that we've developed is kind of fucking good and it's not terrible. And guess what? As long as your shit and my shit don't, don't, don't tear our lives up too bad, sometimes people end up loving each other even when each other is not perfect. And I feel like that's what you're seeing in Jada and Will is that maybe their relationship has transitioned beyond that, that possessive, controlling, you're my everything partner to, I know what your capacity is and some things you can't do for me. And that's okay. I'm going to respect you are where you are for your capacity, but we're going to get our needs met how we get them met. And I think it's shade now that I'm thinking about it that August Alcina would knowingly be participating in this situation and then be like, it broke me. It's like, well, you had a choice. Now that I've heard all of the sides, I tend to now go back towards them because as a married married person, I get it. Like if you're in their family house, how did you think that you were going to get uh, upset the entire family? So your, your, your thought was she was going to divorce her husband and run her and her children were going to run off with you and your mental instability and your lack of fire. Now that was shame. <laughs> Truth, but shame. <laughs> Girl, you know me. I'm going to get to the point eventually, bitch. The point there is, I don't understand how and where you felt like you had the right. And even in your messages, you say, I don't think I had the right to love you. You didn't. You did not have the right fucking right. And I think you need to receive that and stop giving interviews. And Angela Yee, girl, this one might backfire on you, sis. It's not really funny. (laughs) (laughs) I know this was your little shot, bitch. But Algus Alcina talking about fucking Jada now puts you in this situation where you'll never be in the the Smith radius again. If I were them, you are now persona non grata to to the entire Hollywood set that we're in, bitch. Because there's no way... This little bitch thought she could just really just interview my side nigga and do a whole expose. Like, and this is the thing. I get that it's newsworthy, but I get what they what they were saying. Like, how is this? Did we get to this place where the the, the that the Mrs. Smith's pussy is everybody's business, bitch? Like the idea that this man that like, we live in a society where this man felt like it could benefit his career and the album that dropped along that was time. that was fucking suicidal as hell bitch i was depressed bitch i had to stop listening bitch. but listen the album dropped along with the confessional where he's talking about how she was broken and it's just like you're using the fact your proximity to the smith to be able to capitalize on the fact that whatever you wanted to happen wasn't going to happen and it just to me reeks of like possessiveness and and like a cis man like really trying to like use the image of what a wife's supposed to be to try to cast doubt on Jada Smith and ride for once again for a clout to try to get like uh, I guess more record sales or or greater um, I guess or a greater like awareness of his brand or his name and it's just like why can't you just be August Alcina, a great singer, and and find some music that's great. not going to be yeah. that, that's not that's find some music that's not going to be wrist slitting, and then <laughs> like and then maybe we can talk. But but like bringing up Jada in this situation and the Smiths and the way Will and Jada handled that to me was just so boss. Go ahead, sis. You know what's going to be fab about this whole thing? <laughs> Jada's gonna win another Emmy from this episode, bitch. I'm just I'm just putting that into the episode. Like, one thing you can't deny is the power of the Smiths and the power of what Jada has done with this red table talk brand. Oh, girl. Cause apparently this was this is like one of the highest and fastest watch um shows on Facebook Watch. So shout out to Jada for doing that. Shout out to Jada and Will Smith. And and let me say, when the news first came out, I was like, okay, but I was never like against Jada because, you know, when you are rich, the rules are just different. You know what I'm saying? The rules are different. So I'm not like, I was shocked that she was with August, but I'm not, it's not shocking to me that, you know, they, they, well, she had an affair, Will allegedly had, like, that's not shocking to me because people with money get to do whatever they want. Um, I do like the fact that she was honest and she, now when Will told her like entanglement, like, sis, we're going to actually have to define what that means. Um, (laughs) When he got her on that, but 
other than that, I like the fact that she own up to it. And then the only thing, it's like, August, you can go back under whatever rock you crawl under because all she needed to tell me is that they broke up years ago and he was the one that decided to stop talking to her. That let me know all I needed to know. August, you tried it. You tried it. Like, you should have... You should, And I don't like this whole narrative that people were trying to spin that she was a predator. Like, yeah, he had. He may have had mental issues or health issues. Oh, who or, don't? Or whatever. Yeah, who doesn't have, like, mental health issues? But at the end of the day, he was a grown-ass man. Like, he was, what, That's 22? my point. They made it seem like it wasn't consent. Like, right. It out, like, right? it was, like, like R. Okay, Kelly or some yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, I, well, it wasn't that, y'all. Y'all really reaching deep for that. Right, like, like, like she adopted him. Or so, like, no, like, he was a he was a grown-ass man who had a career. He had a Like, it wasn't like he had his own career separate of the Smith. And so I didn't like that narrative and the fact that he purposely, he was very vague with that in his story to Angela Yee. Like, nigga, why are you bringing this up and y'all broke up Y'all broke up years ago, and you ended it when you saw she was working um, on things with Will. It's like that's what separated people do. That's why I would, I personally would never be involved with somebody, and there was like no divorce finalized. I can't find a a public um, document of it because when people are separated, there's always a possibility that people are going to get back together, and that's why I don't believe in having affairs with married people because. You, that one person, can't compete with with a person, another person, when there is history. Like, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a man that I can build history with, that I can lock into. You can't, you can't, as the third party, compete with a bitch that they have history with unless he's an old man and he just wants to replace you for the younger model or he's just really trying to go. Typically, for people that are not rich, that are regular everyday folks, even when they're separated, you're just not going to come in and swoop a spouse away that easy from somebody that they had history with, somebody whose their lives are built into each other. So for him to think that him, it's like you can't provide, even if Jada was to leave um, Will, she would still be taking care of you. Like, you haven't done anything. Like, you might have new money, but the Smiths have, like, foundational wealth. Like, they have they have compounds. Like, so you, other than providing good dick to her, like, that that was, like, no shade. That was all it was going to be. Like, what, like, what did you really think? Like, what did you really, like, and I don't feel sorry that um, Jada moved on because it happens. Sometimes you just have to, you have to know your place. Cause it's been times where I use people just for sex, just to get me through something. And it's like, when it's over, it's over. It's like no hard, especially, and I'm the type of person, I'll tell you up front, like, don't fall in love. Don't catch no feel. Like, I just need to, like she said, I needed to feel good. Sometimes girl, you just need to feel good. And the fact that you got in your feelings and because you were a man and you knew how people were going to smear Jada because she was a woman. It doesn't matter what prestige she held. You know the man, a black woman, you know that as soon as people heard that you were in a relationship with her, how they were going to flip it on her. August Alcina, I see through you. And then you're going to have the nerve to read Kiki Palmer after the fact. Now, how did he read Kiki Palmer? Kiki Palmer wrote a status... um, on, uh, she wrote a tweet saying that, you know, people's private business um, should um, be kept private. So I guess he thought it was about him. So he going to say, you just mad that I curved you and you were so thirsty because I didn't make it official with you. First of all, August, oh, you wow. should be the last one talking about somebody that was curved. Like the last. You are the epitome of curve. Right. You're the definition. And then Kiki made a response. She posted a picture and it, it, her face looked like it gave now bitch. And she posted the status. and she was like, you know, I could be petty and post screenshots and post um, text messages, but you know, 
you just have I, she's like you just have to know when somebody is really hurt when they're embarrassed and you don't want to compound people's mental issues so i'm not going to do that but i just want to let you know that i'm that bitch okay. and she she left it at that but it's just like august like you like you are petty you are petty. We we didn't need to we didn't need to know. And I'm I'm interested to know if your career was actually in jeopardy um, due to the like. And I, that was one thing I was trying to figure out when he was like, when it starts messing up my money. And I'm like, what? This, well, let this, me ask you this: What, where, how? That's a, that's another thing. You right, girl? Because it's like, well, so what? 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 What money, girl? What? Show me what enterprises that got that. What? What? What major campaigns pulled back because of that? Right. I, last I checked, honey, you was not in doing a damn thing. Right, and Will Smith and Jada aren't even in music now. Their kids are, but I doubt that Willow and Jaden are even like they if they cool with everything. They like free soul kids, so they probably don't even. So I I really feel like you made this up, and no shade. That interview with Angela Yee was a little all over the place for me, and it's just like you were being like a ev- like you were being evasive with a lot of the questions, and now the fact that um she said for certain that the relationship had been oh, and they were like when this came out. We were surprised because the relationship had been over. And she was like, he just stopped talking to me. So the fact that you can stop talking to somebody and now you feel like you can reveal all this information for what? So now you're always going to be known as the person that um, got curved by Jada. And like, where's your music career, your music career going? Because like your album like debuted at like 148. So was it worth it? At the end of the day, was it worth it? that part you got to learn to stay out of people's marriages and let them unless they are divorced and it's finalized and they moved on and they don't live in the same house stay out of people's marriages stay out of people's marriages that's why i don't, I don't um mess with um um people that are separate as soon as i hear married or separated my feelings instantly turn off and i'm like well i no, I'm I'm not going to continue to date you because there there are no um guarantees that you won't. And matter of fact, I'm expecting you to get back with your wife. So it's just it's just it's just not like love and feeling good and all but sometimes you just have to be realistic and assess the situation and August play himself. Bitch, I wouldn't leave Will Smith. It's no shade. And I'm pretty sure August got meat, but like stability and a compound and sunny days, that beats some good dick girl. It that does. beats some good young dick it, It's so many young boys running around with good dick girl. So August, it's no shade. Like you can be replaced. And you and are I don't replaced. think what August realized too, I don't think what August realized too is you are not no shade somebody that did something that was extra phenomenal it sounds like he was someone that was extremely infatuated that had a very very great love and deep relationship for her but it doesn't even in the way he talks he's not saying that she misled him in in any way so then it's like so why are we talking no, she didn't do this to me and she's a wonderful person and a wonderful mother and a wonderful person and she didn't do me wrong and I never said she did this to me or that to me. Like, So now what the fuck are we doing here? Why right. are you talking about somebody that you say has been nothing but good to you? And what, why do we need to know about it? I don't, I, don't get, I don't get what your motivation is if you say that it's not to be messy and that makes your stomach nauseous and stuff. You know, It makes you physically ill. Well, if it if it makes you physically ill, I don't understand how this would even be something that you would discuss. This should be something that you could discuss between you and your friends. You 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 did the album. Let your creative work speak for itself. If that's what you wanted to do, you could speak to your therapist. You could speak to anybody about it. But why? I don't get why on a public platform you would say I'm going to discuss my personal sex life with Jada Pink, and it's something y'all did not know because y'all need to know. And it's like, okay, why do we need to know? Right. And he can't answer that question. That's the one where it's like, well, I was just trying to clear up because I make money and well, well what? It what was nothing clear to clear up? up. No one needed to know any fucking thing. You brought it up and then now you got to clear up what you brought up. 
Or is it that once again, you had relevant your relevance waned, you got you got, in your opinion, a raw deal and not taken seriously. So then yeah, your revenge is bitch, I'm gonna tell everybody. And not only am I gonna tell everybody, I'm I'm now gunning for my book deal. I'm now trying to promote my album. I'm now trying to sell merchandise. I'm now trying to see what I can do to make my name of what we had. And if and if that ain't cloud chasing, I don't know what it is. Yeah, so good luck to whatever career August Alcina has left. Um, now, do I feel like Will and Jada told us everything? No, but at this point, I don't really think they needed to. They said enough. They said enough, and I hope Will has his shit under wraps because, um, you know, do do we need to have another Red Table talk? Only the future will tell, but I I was satisfied with what I got. Now, did and you get in this when they were talking about that? Did you get why they kept trying to bring Dwayne Martin in it? I didn't understand what the fuck they kept. How and how, how did they keep trying to pigeonhole him into it? Did, well, was like, that something that meant? Well, al- allegedly, people have insinuated that um, Dwayne Martin and Will Smith allegedly were more than just friends over the years. Now, you that, know, I've heard that. I have heard that. But I guess in this situation, I didn't get how that was related to. No, when um, it was at the end of the video when he was like, "Oh, I guess I have to get you back," and then Jada said, "Oh, you already have gotten me back." I guess people were trying to say that um, oh. that was the get back. I don't know. I can't confirm or deny. I don't know. Everything That's what we that we said say allegedly. Up your opinions for commentary purposes. Do not make any attack videos, nor do we want you to attack Will Smith. Hope Giselle or anyone else mentioned or described in this video. We want you to know that this is all pure commentary and it is all alleged. Yes. So, um, but no, now the credibility of the Red Table Talk is intact for me. Because this is like, you know, in addition to, but then she she talked about another part where she said she, sometimes you have parts of your life where, that you just don't want to talk about yet. And I can respect that because even with me being as open as I am about certain things, there are other things that I have experienced or been through that I necessarily am not ready to talk about on this platform or like make a post about on social media. So I totally get where she's coming from because sometimes you're not healed enough in different areas where you're really able to talk about it and stand in the fullness of it. So I totally get why she wasn't ready to talk about the affair and her situation with August Alcina so soon. But I feel like, well, nevertheless, I feel like this particular episode save the integrity of the show because what August did, he tried to call into question the integrity of Red Table Talk. And because the Smiths pulled this power move, it it kind of like even fortified the Red Table Talk brand even more, bitch. Because it's not just this woman who has it all together that's just trying to dish it out. It's like, oh, she's also going through, still going through shit as well. Exactly. So I think we will end it on here. I feel like this episode was um, per- particularly lengthy. Yeah. Well, how long um, was it? I don't know. I'll see when. Um, well, it, we yeah, when it ends. But yeah, we. Yeah. Um. I feel like yeah. I feel like we did a, a good episode today. It's, it was. It was a little. Um. Well, not. I don't want to say heavy. The topic wasn't he- heavy, but you know, it was a lot of labor. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. But um, hope we love you. We want to see you win. Um, we want to we want to see you grow and evolve. David John, stop your shit, and share the mic with um trans folks that um need the visibility and need their voices. And Jada, big J- big ups to you. Big ups to you for standing in your stuff and being vulnerable and taking your power back. I live. So that's all I got. And I want to say thank you guys for tuning in to Box Number 512 Podcast, Black Grown Trans Woman Talk. We ask that you please go online, like, follow, and subscribe to us on all of our social media platforms. And also feel free to donate on our anchor page. 
we are a black owned business and we just want you to know that in these times we're doing the best we can to hold it in the boat but we would love it if you could help us just a little bit with a little bit of your change in time and also last but not least we have our live after show every friday black grown trans woman talk box number 512 podcast live after show every friday and keep in mind also our show airs every friday at noon on all podcast platforms tune in for the conversation bye bye thank you for listening to another episode of box number 512 podcast grown black trans woman talk don't forget to go to our anchor page to become a monthly sponsor and also feel free to like follow and subscribe to us on all of our social media platforms And also, please don't forget to rate and review our podcast, Every Comment Matters. And lastly, please, please, please follow and tune in for our live interactive Facebook show every Friday on Facebook and YouTube. Until next time, I'm the Lioness. And I'm Aeon. Bye.